okay if you can't see who's behind 9-11 attacks after this article, I guess you'll never get it. Israel celebrated successful 9-11 operation on Purim holiday. For more than 11 years, Israel has been widely celebrating the success of its 9-11 operation against the United States of America. The latest example, Israeli children recently dressed up as the burning twin towers complete with impaled exploding airplanes to celebrate the bizarre Jewish holiday known as Purim. Purim exalts and commemorates an ancient operation very much like 9-11. It glorifies the depictions of Esther who concealed her Jewish identity to seduce the king of Persia then slyly tricked him into slaughtering 75,000 people deemed to be enemies of the Jews. In other words, Purim celebra celebrates Jews lying, secretly penetrating the highest levels of government and manipulating the leaders of an empire into mass murdering perceived enemies of the Jewish people. That is exactly what the neoconservative Likunnik extremists Wolfowitz, Pearl, Libby and the rest did on September 11, 2001. The only difference is that these modern neocon Esthers would eventually kill millions of people, not just 75,000. And if they succeed in tricking the US into attacking Iran on behalf of Israel, thereby launching World War III, today's neocon Esthers could kill tens or even hundreds of millions wouldn't they just love that? Psychos. The Israeli school children dressed up as the burning twin towers are not the first Zionists to widely celebrate Israel's biggest ever attack on America. That honour belongs to the dancing Israelis, five Mossad spies who set up their cameras in Liberty State Park across the harbour from the World Trade Centre early in the morning of September 11th 2001 and pointed those cameras at the as yet undamaged Twin Towers. Their video of the first plane hitting the North Tower has never been publicly released. When the planes hit the towers, the dancing Israelis went wild. They began leaping, cavorting and high-fiving each other. As the towers burned, the dancing Israelis took pictures of each other, holding up burning cigarette lighters in front of the burning towers. And when the towers were blasted to powder in explosive controlled demolitions, the dancing Israelis went crazy with joy. Their plan had succeeded. Unfortunately for them, and for Israel, their wild celebrations did not go unnoticed. An American woman called the police who arrested the four Mossad operatives, confiscated thousands of dollars in cash stuffed in their socks, and held them for weeks. During their incarceration, the Israeli spies repeatedly failed lie detector tests. Nonetheless, they were secretly sent back to Israel at the request of the Israeli government by Israeli dual citizen and US Homeland Security Chief Michael Shertoff. Later, back in Israel, the dancing Israelis went on television and admitted their complicity in 9-11, but denied having planted explosives that destroyed the Twin Towers, saying, we were only there to document the event. And yeah, how did they know there would be an event to document? Another Israeli, who visibly could not contain his joy at the success of 9-11's Operation Esther, was Benjamin Netanyahu. When the once and future Israeli Prime Minister was asked about his reaction to 9-11, he said, it's very good. Then, catching himself, he added, that while it wasn't exactly good, it was certainly good for Israel. Netanyahu would never stop bragging about how wonderful 9-11 was. Seven years after the attack, he was still saying, we are benefiting from one thing, and that is the attack on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon. That's from Haaretz, April 16, 2008. Netanyahu wasn't the only high-level Israeli court celebrating 9-11. Another culprit was the legend, legendary Mossad spy chief, Mike Harari. On September 11, 2001, 
as the dancing Israelis dance and Netanyahu chortled. Retired Israeli Mossad chief Mike Harari was in Bangkok, Thailand, organising a huge party to celebrate the success of 9-11, of his 9-11 operation. During the merrymaking, Harari bragged to one of his associates, Dmitry Kalazov, that he, Harari, had been responsible for 9-11. And you can listen, listen to that on this radio interview linked here. Kalazov's testimony is supported by documents showing the fake IDs Harari was using in Thailand. All of the Israeli celebrations of 9-11 so far have been unofficial, but the Israeli government is on the record officially applauding another of its many attacks on the US, the 1954 Levon Affair, otherwise known as Operation Susanna. In that covert operation, Israeli Mossad operatives disguised as Egyptians bombed American targets in Egypt. When the Israeli terrorists were caught by the Egyptian authorities and prosecuted, Israel denied any involvement and complained the whole thing was an anti-Semitic smear and they admit that anti-Semitic is a trick they use. But later the Zionist website Wikipedia admits in March 2005, Israel publicly honoured the surviving operatives and President Moshe Katsav presented each of them with a certificate of appreciation with all their efforts on the behalf of the Israel state, ending decades of official denial by Israel. When will Israel officially award a certificate of appreciation to its Mossad operatives who blew up the Twin Towers on World Trade Center 7 and killed almost 3,000 Americans in order to launch a series of US wars against Israel's enemies. Not for another few decades, we may safely surmise. When Israel finally does admit its responsibility for 9-11 and lavish honors on the Mossad terrorists responsible, will it be during Purim? the holiday honouring Jews who seduce Gentile rulers and manipulate them into mass murdering their enemies. Not much more to say really. <laughs>